Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Adara Europis Synagogue. It was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. The black presence in the lands of the Bible, page 15. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. John chapter 24, verse 7, KJV. John chapter 7, verse 24, NLT. Look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly. The first transatlantic slaves in the Americas were so-called Black Portuguese and Spanish Jews from the Iberian Peninsula, North Africa, West Africa, the Portuguese colony of Angola, Mozambique, and Madagascar. They were described by historians as Western Sephardic Jews. This is the story of one of these black Portuguese Our story begins in New York City, or the region that will become New York City. A timeline of New York City will bring much more clarity to this story. Our New York City timeline begins with the rediscovery of the Western Hemisphere by the Spanish. In 1492, Christopher Columbus rediscovers the Americas. In 1524, Italian navigator Giovanni Ravizzano visits New York City Harbor. 1525, Portuguese Esteban Gomez arrives in New York. 1624, the Dutch colony of New Amsterdam is established. 1667, New Amsterdam is renamed New York. Now this brings us to this chapter in our history. New York, land of Esteban and Gomez, 1524. Esteban and Gomez, a black Portuguese. And this is the history on how, originally, before the colony of New Amsterdam by the Dutch, the land that's known as New York was formerly, originally, called by the Spanish 
Tara de Esteban Gomez or the land of Esteban Gomez. So the region or area that would become known as New York City today was named after a black Portuguese, Esteban Gomez. And the black Portuguese descendants will become or would be known in the future as African Americans. The year 1524. The year is 1524. The region, North America. We at Universal Center for Renovation document this information, share sources for this information so the audience can do a deeper dive into this information, preserve this information, and share this information. The first documented visit into New York Harbor by a European was in 1524 by the Italian Giovanni da Ravazzano, an explorer from Florence, Italy, in the service of the French crown. A Spanish expedition led by the Portuguese captain, the subject of our story, Esteban Gomez, sailing for Emperor Charles V, arrived in New York Harbor in January 1525. There was a competition between the Spanish and the French for colonies in North America. So let's continue. And charted the mouth of the Hudson River, which Esteban Gomez, which he renamed Rio de San Antonio, or St. Anthony's River. The Pedron Rio of 1527, the first scientific map to show the east coast of North America, continuously was informed by Gomez Expedition and labeled the northeastern United States as Terra de Esteban Gomez in his honor. The Pedron Rail was a map that the Spanish used of all the lands that they discovered and they lent this chart out to their navigators so they will always be up to date on the lands that their pilots charted of the world. So, if we look at all the old Spanish maps, the area of New York, Boston, New Jersey, the land is recorded as Terra de Esteban Gomez, the land of Esteban Gomez, the original name on the Spanish maps of New York. The official and secret map of the Spanish government or crown was called Padron Real. The Padron Real, known after August 2nd, 1527, as the Padron General was the official and secret Spanish master map 
used as a template for the maps present on all Spanish ships during the 16th century. It was kept in Seville, Spain by the Casa de Contratación. Ship pilots were required to use a copy of the official government chart or risk the penalty of a 50 doubles fine. So the pilots were required on the financial penalty or fine to use this official secret government map. Facsimile of Diogo Ribeiro's 1527 Carta Universal. This map, Carta Universal or Universal Chart, was based on the Padron Real, the official secret map of the Spanish government. The early Spanish and Portuguese explorers used charts and maps that was based on the maps in the possession of the city-states of uh, Genoa and um, Venice. And um, they used maps, charts that were originally in our archives of the Eastern Roman Empire or in possession of the Byzantine Roman Empire archives. And those maps, the Byzantine maps, were based on um, maps that the Carthaginians used and the Phoenicians. Now, this is a facsimile of Diego Ribeiro's 1527 Carta Universal. The original is in the Herzogin Anna Emilia Bibliothek in Weimar, Germany. But these maps, these old Spanish maps, are based on ancient maps from Carthage and from Phoenicia that was kept in the archives of the Byzantine Empire, passed on to Venice and Genoa, and eventually passed on to Spain, like the map that Christopher Columbus used. These maps are older than... um. Then um, we know. This is interesting history on the origins of the master map or chart of the Spanish Empire. The Padron Real, which was constantly improved from its first version in 1507 or 1508. It was produced by Seville based Spanish organization, the Casa de Contratación. This organization was established in 1503. All returning ships had to report any details of new lands or discoveries they had made to the organization, Casa de Contratación, together with latitudes and longitudes of the places that they traveled to. The ship's officers were put on the oath before they testified of the discoveries and the latitudes and longitudes of the places that they were sailing to, saw, visited. The pilots at the Casa de Contratación then plotted this information on their maps. When a new ship was setting out, they would be given charts which were copied from the master map, which was constantly being updated, the Padron Real, which was later called the Padron General. So these maps were constantly being updated and given to the Spanish ship pilots to make their navigations easier.
the navigator Diego Ribeiro, who entered the Spanish service in 1518, prepared several versions of the chart during 1525 to 1532. He upgraded the map when he explored North America. His information was placed on the newer versions of the Padron Real. All the updated information on what he saw in North America. Diego Romero, who entered service in 1518, prepared several versions of the chart or map during 1525 to 1532 after Spanish explorations in North America. So, who was the man that the northern part of North America, the northeastern part of North America, was named after. His name was Esteban Gomez. Esteban Gomez was born around 1483 and died 1538. He was a Portuguese photographer and explorer. He was making maps and exploring lands for Spain. The Iberian Peninsula is shared by two countries, two neighboring countries, Spain and Portugal. Portugal location is on the more western side of the peninsula. And Lisbon is its capital city. The meaning of the name or the word Portugal, Portugal, port of the city, Cal or Gal. Portugal is named after a city that was a major port city in ancient times. During the time of the Roman Empire, Portugal, port of the city, Cal or Gal. In this map from 1986, Portugal is drawn in the red circle. Portugal's nearest neighbors are Spain and Morocco. This map highlights the closeness of Portugal with North and Northwestern Africa. And why the Portuguese were among the first of the European traders and merchants to trade with goods and services in North and Northwest Africa. Esteban Gomes, which was Esteban Gomes' actual name, was Portuguese and he was of Portuguese origin. Estevão Gomes, also known by the Spanish version of his name, Esteban Gomes, born around 1483, and died 1538, was a Portuguese cartographer and explorer. He sailed at the service of Castile, Spain, in the fleet of Ferdinand Magellan, but deserted the expedition when they had reached the Strait of Magellan, and he returned to Spain 
in May 1521. In 1524, he explored present-day Nova Scotia. While historical accounts vary, Gomes or Gomez may have entered New York Harbor and seen the Hudson River. Because his expedition, the 1529 Diego Ribeiro World Map, outlines the east coast of North America almost perfectly. In his biography, Gomez was of African descent and was probably born in Porto, northern Portugal. In 1519, Gomez or Gomes sailed with Magellan in the first circumnavigation of Earth. Gomez was of African descent. This because a man is Portuguese or Spanish. It doesn't necessarily tell or gives his origin. We have to judge carefully when we read about Portuguese and Spanish. There were so many Spanish and Portuguese men who was called black Portuguese or Spanish Negroes that we have to carefully evaluate what we read and understand when we look at the historical context of who and when the historians mean by Portuguese or Spanish. Gomez was of African descent, according to his biography, and he was born in the city of Porto in Portugal. He was born in northern Portugal in 1483. Esteban Gomez sailed with Magellan in the first circumnavigation of the earth. He led a very interesting life, this Portuguese man, this black Portuguese man. The Magellan Expedition also known as the Magellan Elcano Expedition, was the first voyage around the world. It was a 16th century Spanish expedition, initially led by Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan to the Malaccas or islands in Southeast Asia which departed from Spain in 1519 and completed in 1522 by Spanish navigator Juan Sebastian Elcano. After crossing the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans, culminating in the first circumnavigation of the world, When modern historians mention the first circumnavigation of the world was by the Portuguese, it's a bit of a half-truth. The Phoenicians, the Carthaginians, and the Mycenaeans before them in ancient times sailed the world 
their maps or maps based on their charts found in the archives of the Byzantine Empire is what the Portuguese and the Spanish navigators used in modern times. And not to digress, because the Universal Center for Renovation channel is based on documenting world history, but history of Israel first. So to prove that Esteban Gomez was what can be called a Black man or man of color, let's bring out some more information, documented resources or sources that we can all use and share. So we go to a book called The Epic of New York City, a narrative history by Edward Rob Ellis. We can use information is sourced. And um, please share this information. It should not be forgotten or left obscured. Charles of Spain, the Spanish king, sent a Portuguese navigator to explore the eastern shores of America, Esteban Gomez. This man was a Negro named Esteban Gomez. He reached the site of New York on January 17, 1526. Because this was the feast day of St. Anthony, Gomez named the Hudson River the San Antonio River. Ice flows drifted downriver, discouraged Gomez from pushing up into the interior. It isn't likely he saw any Indians from the deck of his ship because none lived on Manhattan during the winter, merely merely camping there in the hunting and fishing seasons. In any event, Gomez did not find any gold or silver lying about, and precious metals were the prizes most coveted by the Spaniards. The Epic City of New York, page 15. Esteban Gomez was a Negro. This quote is from the Catholic Reading Circle View, volume 10, page 48. It is well known that the Portuguese were familiar with our coast as early as 1503 to 1504, and Juan de la Casa had made a map of North America as early as 1500, which, by the way, is the oldest Spanish map of the coast known to cartographers. This might not be a well-known fact, but the Portuguese and Spanish explored and made maps of North America before the English. Turning to another Catholic source, because we are dealing primarily with Catholic history. Spain and Portugal, during a time of European exploration, were both Catholic nations. So, the Catholic Reading Circle Review, page 48. 
The average school history has little or nothing to say of the early explorations of our Atlantic coast prior to the arrival of the Dutch in 1609. A careful study of the eastern coast of our country from Labrador to Florida will convince us that Portuguese, Spanish, and Italian navigators had explored it 100 years before Henry Hudson's half moon had ascended the beautiful river that today bear his name, the Hudson River, but which Esteban Gomez in 1525 had already discovered and called the Hudson River Rio San Antonio. 1897, the Catholic Reading Circle Review, page 48. On Ribera's map, the map that's based on the master map of Spain, the Padron Real, the whole region from New Jersey to Rhode Island is called the land of Esteban Gomez and Springle and Asher both prove the discovery of the Hudson River by Gomez. Terra de Esteban Gomez from New Jersey to Rhode Island. The Catholic Reading Circle Review, Volume 10, page 48. The information to prove that prominent Portuguese and prominent Spanish Europeans were people of color, so-called black, men of Israel, it's unlimited, but let's go to another source. Hope Cook, Seeing New York, History Walks for Armchair and Footloose Travelers. Now we're going to reference page four. This information is backing up the prophecy that Israel would be scattered across the four corners of the world and they would be in all nations including Portugal and Spain and Esteban Gomez was one of these men the first explorers didn't put ashore or explore the land nonetheless the men all of them hired mercenaries Gomez was a hired mercenary for Spain. They claimed and named the land around the harbor for the foreign princes who were paying them. The first known scout to arrive was Giovanni da Rarazano. They were considered scouts. The first ones to arrive and scout out the land, spy out the land. Rarazano was a Florentine Italian sailing for the king of France. He was a mercenary for the king of France. In 1524, hinting at still earlier European tribal encounters or European encountering Native Americans, 30 canoes of friendly Indians paddled out to meet the ship of Verrazano. As a storm blew up, Verrazano pulled anchor without landing but he logged on his ship log he noted recorded the steep forested hills that's what he called the place and the beautiful stream the latter day Hudson he called the Hudson River the beautiful stream back in France map makers recorded the visit 
and called the place the beautiful stream. That name became in France the Vendôme after a French prince. The outer bay, the Gulf of Santa Margarita after the king's sister. The harbor and its islands, the Angulima, a title of the dolphin, a prince of of France. Continuation from the same book, page four. One year later, after Rarizano, Esteban Gomez, a black Portuguese of Moorish descent, sailing for the Spanish king, probed local shores ice drifts stopped this explorer also from disembarking but Gomez rechristened or renamed the waterway to the west of the island before leaving this time it flowed the Hudson River this time it flowed as the San Antonio he named the Hudson San Antonio in honor of that saint's day on which he arrived. He arrived on Saint Anthony, Antonio or Saint Anthony's uh, day. So he named the Hudson River San Antonio or Saint Anthony. Esteban Gomez is described as a black. Portuguese, who is also of Moorish descent. A streetwise history of New York City. Inside the Apple, Michelle Nevis and James Nevis. So let's take a look inside. Even less remembered is Esteban Gomez, the Portuguese navigator who was sailing at the same time as Rarizano. He sighted the Mehuk Kuntuk in 1525, the Hudson River the name that the Native Americans called it. But Gomez renamed it the Rio San Antonio. In Spain, cartographer Diego Ribeiro used Gomez information to produce the first reliable map of an entire eastern seaboard. On it, the area around New York is labeled Terra de Esteban Gomez. However, Spain never pressed its territorial claims. No doubt in part because of the map's caption. Land of Esteban Gomez, discovered by him in 1525 by order of his majesty. Abundance of trees, game, salmon, turbot, and souls, but no gold is found. So Spain really did not care because what they were looking for was precious metals like gold. So they didn't press any territorial claims of New York. Another book you might find fascinating is called Gotham, A History of New York City to 1898 by 
Edwin G. Burroughs and Mike Wallace. A map of the new world drawn by Juan de la Cosa in the first decade of the 16th century hints that Europeans, probably anonymous fishermen looking for cod, may have visited King when Christopher Columbus was still exploring the Caribbean. The first solid evidence of such a visit, however, connies with the arrival of a French vessel, La Dauphine, piloted by the Florentine navigator Giovanni da Varazzano, King Francis, one of France, and a syndicate of Lyons silk merchants had commissioned Varazzano to find a northern route to China and Japan. The same Indies that Columbus dreamed of finding. In March 1524, after a 50-day crossing from Madeira, a region in Portugal, the Dauphin began crawling up the coast from Cape Fear. By mid-April, she passed Sandy Hook and anchored in the narrows between Staten Island and Brooklyn. One year after Rarozano's brief visit, Esteban Gomez, a black Portuguese pilot who had sailed with Magellan, ventured a fair distance up the Hudson, which he named Deer River. Before concluding the river, it didn't lead to China. This book calls Esteban Gomez a black Portuguese. Also to be noted, Lenat Pe Hoking was the land of the Lenape, the Native Americans that lived in the area or region of New York or the northeastern area, which was renamed the land of Esteban Gomez, New Amsterdam, New York. And there's more source material to share. Here's another one from a book called Amera Indian Images and the Legacy of Columbus by Rene Jara and Nicholas Spadaccini. For example, on the world map of Diego Ribeiro, dated 1529, the secret Spanish map, Louisiana and Florida were the land of Gray, the Virginias and the Carolinas, the land of Alien, and Pennsylvania in New York, that of Esteban Gomez. However, this is not surprising. The Spanish conquistadors were not creating commercial trading posts connected to the peninsula that had to be secured slowly. Rather, they were creating their colonies, that is, their personal fiefdoms, isolated among the indigenous lands, maintaining the smallest connection possible with the centers of power created by the state in Mexico, Tenochtitlan, 
and in Lima, Peru. The Spanish colonized Louisiana, Florida, Virginia, the Carolinas, Pennsylvania, and New York. These settlements were linked with their colonies in Mexico and Peru. If we want to understand our future, we have to understand our past. That's why this history is vital. Pocahontas by Grace Steele Woodward. In 1524, Giovanni de Barrazzano, the dark-bearded Florentine explorer who had been commissioned by Francis I of France to explore the New World, had led his fleet into Chesapeake Bay. His stay was short and disinterested, however, for he had already planted the French flag on a windswept sand dunes of the North Carolina coast near Cape Hatteras and Cape Fear. Verrazano already claimed North Carolina for France. However, a more colorful visit was that made in 1525 by Esteban Gomez, who arrived on Powhatan soil to claim the land for Spain. He arrived on the Native American lands, but claimed the land for Spain. The military drums, the clang of armor, the flash of silver helmets, the gleaming tips of spears, glaives, and maces, the hacubusas, and their slashed and rimmed uniforms, all these sights and sounds on the wilderness shore made an impressive spectacle for the Powhatans watching from hiding places behind sand dunes and in marsh grasses. In a ceremony epitomizing the glory and power of Spain, the conquerors stood at attention as Gomez exclaimed proudly, I possess all the new western world in the name of our Lord Charles V. Gomez did not stay to exploit or administer the Powhatan territory. However, and the Powhatans were not yet faced with the problem of dealing with Europeans. So here we have this man of color, this black Portuguese, claiming parts of the territory of North America for this king and Spain. So let's look into the world of this Charles V who lands in North America was so proudly claimed by Esteban Gomez. And for us to get the best view possible an accurate view let's turn to volume 3 of G.A. Rogers Sex and Race Emperor Charles V who Gomez was hired to explore and map out lands was a Habsburg who is a Negro European types German this is Emperor Leopold the first Emperor of Germany by Thomas of Ypres obviously J. A. Rogers believed the Habsburgs or people of color who is a Negro 
European types. German. So J.A. Rogers believed Leopold I, a Habsburg, like Charles V, a Habsburg, were Negroes of European type. Leopold the First, Leopold Ignaz Joseph Balthazar Franz Felician, born June 1640, died May the 5th, 1705, was Holy Roman Emperor, King of Hungary, Croatia, and Bohemia, the second son of Ferdinand the Great. Holy Roman Emperor by his first wife, Maria Anna of Spain. Leopold became heir apparent in 1654 by the death of his elder brother, Ferdinand IV. Elected in 1658, Leopold ruled the Holy Roman Empire until his death in 1705 becoming the second longest ruling Habsburg emperor, 46 years and nine months. He was both a composer and a considerable patron of music. So could it be possible that Esteban Gomez, a Portugal pilot or navigator, Black Portuguese descent was in service to a Spanish king who was also of black descent. Let's find out who are Germans of Negro descent or dark descent or Germans who are people of color. Who is a Negro? And that is a good question that the writer and historian J.A. Rogers was asking European types who are of Negro ancestry, Germans. Appendix 1 from Appendix to Volume 3 states. Some of the Germans, for reasons given in Volume 1, were very dark. Henry Swinburne, an Englishman who visited Cologne, Germany, in 1780, described the elector or ruler of that part of Germany as a little hell or stern black Man, in the book Courts of Europe, Volume 1, page 371, dated 1841. So, here we go. The Courts of Europe, at the close of the last century, by the late Henry Swinburne, Esquire. Volume 1 We went to court and were invited to dine with the elector Kaneskeg the family name of the elector of Cologne He is 73 years old a little hell black man. The coats of arms of the elector of Cologne He is a little hell black man. The elector of Cologne Germany 
1780. The Electoral Palace at Bonn, Germany. Henry Swinburne, whose letters to his brother were published long after his death under the title of The Courts of Europe, writes under date of November 29th, 1780. Bonn, Germany is a pretty town, neatly built and its streets tolerably well paved, all in black lava. It is situated in a flat near the river. The Elector of Cologne's palace faces the south entry. It has no beauty of architecture and is all plain white without any pretensions. We went to court and were invited to dine with the Elector Konigsegg, the Elector of Cologne. He is 73 years old, a little half black man. This is from the book, this quote. The Life of Ludwig von Beethoven by Alexander Wilock Bayer. The Electorate of Cologne or the Office of the Elector of Cologne. This office lasted from 953 AD to 1803 AD. It was a vestige of a medieval post or office. Here's the flag of the Elector of Cologne and the coat of arms. And here we have a map of the Lower Rhine River around 1560 with the electorate of Cologne highlighted in red, including the Duchy of Westphalia. The name of the little black man or the hell black man, his name is Maximilian Frederick von Konigsgig. Othenfels. He was born on the 13th of May, 1708. He died on April 15, 1784. He was the Archbishop, elect of Cologne, and the Bishop of Munster from 1761 to 1784. He was born in Cologne, son of Count Albert Eusebius Franz von Konigsgig. Rothenfels and his wife, Countess Maria von Mandeshied Blinkenheim. He was the first elector of Cologne to come from outside the Bavarian Wetzelbach dynasty since 1583. He was the first employer and patron of the young Ludwig von Beethoven, who at age 12 composed three early piano Sonatas, capital W O, capital O forty seven, in his honor. These works, known as the Kurfin Stand Sonaten, Prince Elector Sonatas in German. The Elector of Cologne was the patron of Beethoven, who was also a German of dark or black complexion like the Elector of Cologne. And here, uh, to go into Beethoven's uh, heritage or ancestry, uh, going to reference sex and race, Negro Caucasian mixing in all ages and all lands by J.A. Rogers, Volume 1, The Old World. And here we have a picture of Ludwig von Beethoven at the age of 44, drawn from life by Latron and engraved by Huffel. Ludwig von Beethoven. He's an excellent example of the German type of Negro ancestry that J.A. Rogers 
was uh, explaining what Leopold did, Emperor of Germany. He's a black European or a man of color, a German, a black German, a black European, or a Negro uh, German or a person of color in Germany. These are just classifications. Sex and Race, Volume 3, Notes on Beethoven. Because Beethoven was German, and because his portraits are usually shown with a white tone and abundant hair, nearly everyone thinks of him as white. Beethoven lovers are certain of this and are generally amazed and even indignant when told that he was negroid in color and features. However, there is not a single shred of evidence to support the belief that he was a white man, neither from those who knew him nor from his biographers. Beethoven was clearly negroid in color and features and he was a German so there was plenty of Germans many Germans who were Negroid in color and features throughout history Beethoven's color according to his contemporaries rounded nose black brownish complexion his beard, he had not shaved for several days, made the lower part of his already brown face still darker. Dark, brown, dark red, red and brown, brownish, short, ugly, dark. These are descriptions of Beethoven by his contemporaries. Beethoven's color, according to his biographers, Beethoven could not possibly be called a handsome man. His somewhat flat, broad nose and rather wide mouth, his small piercing eyes and swarthy complexion pockmarked into the bargain gave him a strong resemblance to a mulatto swarthy the word swarthy come from the anglo-saxon swat black alexander willock there in his description of beethoven cites the following story from Andre de Vivesi, another of Beethoven's biographers, who had it from Carpani. The story is about Hayden, Beethoven's teacher. Joseph Hayden, his teacher, was also a German of dark or black complexion but before we go any further let's reveal a little history about the author of sex and race Joe Augustus Rogers J. A. Rogers, or Joe Augustus Rogers, was a Jamaican-American author, journalist, and historian. J. A. Rogers was the author of Sex and Race, Volumes 
one, two, and three. In the book, Nature Knows No Color Line, amongst many other books that he wrote. For a really interesting reveal, let's look into the book, African Zion, Studies in Black Judaism, by Edith Bruder and Tudor Parfit. From Cambridge Scholars Publishing. This is a direct quote from the book African Zion Studies in Malacca Judaism. Marcus Garvey, J. A. Rogers, and George G. M. James, among many others considered themselves to be the only true physical descendants of ancient Israel. So according to Edith Bruder and Tudor Prophet, J. A. Rogers considered himself himself to be a descendant of Ancient Israel. J. A. Rogers, his works takes on a greater meaning when you understand he is documenting the history of Israel scattered throughout all lands and periods of history. His books are brilliant a masterpiece of scholarship. He's one of the greatest historians of our times for preserving so much forgotten and lost information. Joe Augustus Rogers, J.A. Rogers, born September 6, 1880, Died March 26, 1966. Was a Jamaican American author, journalist, and historian who focused on the history of Africa as well as the African diaspora. After settling in the United States in 1906, he lived in Chicago and then New York City. He became interested in the history of African Americans in the United States. His research spanned the academic fields of history, sociology, and anthropology. He challenged prevailing ideas about scientific racism and the social construction of race demonstrated the connections between civilizations and traced achievements of ethnic Africans, including some with mixed European ancestry. He was one of the earliest popularizers of African and African American history in the 20th century. Ludwig von Beethoven, baptized December 17, 1770, died March 26, 1827, was a German composer and pianist. Beethoven remains one of the most admired composers in the history of Western music. His works rank among the most performed of the classical music repertoire and span the transition from the classical period to the Romantic era in classical music. His career has been conventionally been divided into early, middle, and late periods. His early period, during which he forged his craft, is typically considered to have lasted until 1802, 
from 1802 to around 1812, his middle period showed an individual development from the styles of Joseph Hayden and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, and is sometimes characterized as heroic. During this time, he began to grow increasingly deaf. In his late period, from 1812 to 1827, he extended his innovations in musical form and expression. Beethoven was born in Bonn. His musical talent was obvious at an early age. He was initially harshly and intensely taught by his father, Johann von Beethoven. So let's take a deeper dive into the life of Ludwig von Beethoven. Volume 1, 2, and 3 by Alexander Woolock. Dayer. This is the Theater and the Winner, 1815, Vienna, Austria. This is where Beethoven performed. Chapter 11. Beethoven in Vienna. Beethoven settles down in Vienna. It would be pleasant to announce the arrival of Ludwig von Beethoven in Vienna with, so to speak, a grand flourish of trumpets and to indulge the fancy in a highly colored and poetic account of his advent there. The life of Ludwig von Beethoven by Alexander Wheelock Thayer. The Death Mask of Ludwig von Beethoven. Like the multitude of studious youths and young men who came thither annually to find schools and teachers. This small, thin, dark-complexioned, pock-marked, dark-eyed, bewigged young musician of 22 years had quietly journeyed to the capital to pursue the study of his art with a small, thin, dark-complexioned, pock-marked, black-eyed, and bewigged veteran composer. In the well-known antidote related by Carpani of Hayden's introduction to him, Anton Estrahazy, the prince, is made to call the composer a Moor. Beethoven had even more of the Moor in his looks than his master. Joseph Hayden, Beethoven teacher, his master, his teacher, is called a Moor. Joseph Hayden, the teacher of Beethoven in 1806. Alexander Wheelock there, in his description of Beethoven, cites the following story from Andre de Havesi, another of Beethoven's biographers, who had it from Carpani. The story is about Hayden, Beethoven's teacher. Everyone knows the incident at Kismartin or Eisenstolt, the residence of Prince Estrahazy on his birthday. In the middle of the first allegro of Hayden's symphony, his highness asked the name of the author. He was brought forward. What? exclaimed the prince. The music is by this blackamoor? Well, my fine blackamoor, henceforth thou art in my service. What is thy name? Joseph Hayden from Beethoven the Man, 
page 27 to 28, 1927. Joseph Hayden, the teacher of Beethoven, was called Blackamoor. Section Race, Volume 3. Carpini says of this that Hayden's color gave strong reason for the prince's remark and that Hayden was thereafter called the Moor. As late as the last century, the word Moor was used to describe Negroes in all the countries of Western Europe. Shakespeare uses the words more and Negro synonymously. In Germany, the Negro was called more. In France, Mori or more. In Sweden, Morian, etc. Sex and Race, Volume 3. Joseph Hayden, born March 31st, 1732, died May 31st, 1809, was an Austrian composer of the classical period. He was instrumental in the development of chamber music, such as the string quartet and piano trio. His contributions to musical form have led him to be called father of the symphony and father of the string quartet. Hayden spent much of his career as a court musician for the wealthy Esterhazy family at their Esterhaza castle. Until the later part of his life, this isolated him from other composers and trends in music so that he was, as he put it, forced to become original. Yet his music circulated widely, and for much of his career, he was the most celebrated composer in Europe. He was a friend and mentor of Mozart, a tutor of Beethoven, and the elder brother of composer Michael Hayden. Beethoven's grandfather came from Louvain, Belgium, which with Holland had been ruled for centuries by Spain. The Spanish of that time not only had considerable Negro strain or ancestry from the Moorish invasion of Spain, but they had unmixed Negroes in their armies. Beethoven's Belgian ancestry. As regard Gother, the great German writer, who is also said to be of Negro ancestry. Going back to Beethoven, descriptions of him is a sketch from Life by Latrone and engraved by Huffle. Done in charcoal, it showed Beethoven dark. That is more like the descriptions of his color. However, in some books, this picture has been changed somewhat. The charcoal has been rubbed out, giving quite a different aspect to his face. Gother, German writer, Negro, Sex and Race, Volume 1 and 3. Johann Wolfgang von Gother. As regards Gother, great German writer who is also said to be of Negro ancestry. Sex and Race, Volume 1, page 118. For source on Gother's ancestry, Hertz says, it is indeed very significant that many race dogmatists find in Gother non-Teutonic Oriental or Eastern traits, 
almost all anthropologists hold Gother for a non-Teutonic or non-European blonde. He had a distinctively dark complexion, race and civilization, and Gother's ancestry are two members called Moor, the German word then used for Negro, Sex and Race, Volume 3. Johann Wolfgang von Gother, born August 28, 1749, died March 22, 1832, was a German poet, playwright, novelist, scientist, statesman, theater director, and critic. His works include plays, poetry, literature, and ascetic criticism, as well as treaties on botany, anatomy, and color. He is widely regarded as the greatest and most influential writer in the German language. His work having a profound and wide-ranging influence on Western literacy, political and philosophical thought from the late 18th century to the present day. Many African Americans' ancestry can be traced back to Black Germans. Black Dutch Genealogy Black Dutch is a term with several different meanings in United States dialect and slang. It generally refers to racial, ethnic, or cultural roots. Its meaning varies, and such differences are contingent upon time and place. Several varied groups of multiracial people have sometimes been referred to as or identified as Black Dutch, most often as a reference to their ancestors. The term Black Dutch appears to have become widely adopted in the Southern Highlands and as far west as Texas in the early 1800s by certain southeastern families of mixed race ancestry, especially those of Native American descent. When used in the South, it usually did not imply African admixture, although some families who used the term were of tri racial descent. In addition, some mixed-race persons of European and African descent identified as Portuguese or Native American as a way to explain their variation in physical appearance from Europeans and to be more easily accepted by European-American neighbors. By the late 18th century, Numerous free mixed race families were migrating west along with English neighbors to the frontiers of Virginia and North Carolina where racial castes were less strict than in plantation country of the tide water. A Malongan family from Tennessee, this photograph was taken in the 1920s. This is a family of black Germans from Europe. Wikipedia. 
black Dutch. The term Dutch for people of German descent also acquired a wider meaning. In those days, Dutch or Dutch and Dutch was the words for the German language spoken in what we now known as the Netherlands and Germany. Germans with swarthy or darker complexions were called Black Dutch or Swasa Dutch or Black Germans. According to James Pilant, who studied families claiming Black Dutch as part of their heritage. There are strong indications that the original Black Dutch were swarthy, complexioned Germans. Anglo-Americans usually apply the term to any dark-complexioned American or European descent. In contrast to the Anglo surname Malungans, nearly 60% of American families reporting Black Dutch tradition bear surnames that are either decidedly German or possibly Americanized form Germanic origin. Malungans in the United States were known as free people of color and black Indians. Malungans, free people of color, black Germans, black Europeans. A Malungan man compared to Ludwig von Beethoven, both of German ancestry. Malungans are descendants of black and brown and dark-complexioned Europeans who have lived in Europe since the days of the Roman Empire. Western and Eastern Roman Empires. The Eastern Empire was also known as the Byzantine Empire. Many of them came to North America as indentured servants. They came from Germany, England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, and other European countries. Habsburg, coat of arms. Plus, ultra, the motto, further and beyond. Plus, ultra, English, further, beyond, is a Latin phrase and the national motto of Spain. A reversal. Of the original phrase, non plus ultra, nothing further beyond, said to have been inscribed as a warning on the pillars of Hercules at the Strait of Gibraltar, which marked the edge of the known world in antiquity. It has metaphorical suggestions of taking risks and striving for excellence. Its original version 
the personal motto of the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V, also Duke of Burgundy and King of Spain, was plus ultra in France. The motto was adopted some decades after the discovery of the New World by Christopher Columbus. These two pillars further and beyond symbolizes the pillars of Hercules or the Straits of Gibraltar. The Carthaginians and Phoenicians did not want anyone traveling further than Spain towards the Atlantic where the Americans were located. So they gave a warning to anyone going past this region that there was nothing further. So the tribes in America remained off limits until Christopher Columbus rediscovered or discovered the Americas. Emperor Charles V. Charles V, born. February 24th, 1500, died September 21st, 1558, was Holy Roman Emperor and Archduke of Austria from 1519 to 1556, King of Spain, Castile and Aragon from 1516 to 1556 and Lord of the Netherlands as titular Duke of Burgundy from 1506 to 1555. He was here too and then head of the rising house of Habsburg during the first half of the 16th century. His dominions in Europe included the Holy Roman Empire, extending from Germany to Northern Italy, with direct rule over the Austrian hereditary lands, and the Burgundian Low Countries, and Spain, with its possessions of the Southern Italian Kingdoms, of Naples and Sicily and Sardinia. In the Americas, he oversaw both the continuation of the long lasting Spanish colonization as well as a short lived German colonization. The personal union of the European in American territories of Charles V was the first collection of realms labeled the empire on which the sun never sets. Lands of Charles V Low Countries, also known as Netherlands, miscegenation in Holland, Belgium, Austria, Russia, and Poland, Negro strain or ancestry into Belgium and the Netherlands after the Christian era, principally through the Jews who migrated there in large numbers from Spain and Portugal, and from the Spanish occupation of the Low Countries, which lasted nearly three centuries, from 1526 to 1792. As was said, Spain had large numbers of Negroes in her armies, and Negro blood in her nobility. 
from the Netherlands. In red circles, Canberra and Brussels. The Spaniards tinged the fair skin of the Nordics of the Netherlands and created, according to Theophile Gautier, a new Flemish type with brown skin and black hair. A second race, which the soldiers of the Spanish Duke of Alva had sown between Brussels and Canberra. Section Race, Volume 1. The people of this area was known for having brown skin and black hair in the Netherlands. Now, let's go back to the subject of our history. Uh, Esteban Gomes, or in Portuguese, Gomes. In 1519, Gomes Gomes sailed with Magellan in the first circumnavigation of Earth as the pilot of the San Antonio. When they have reached the Strait of Magellan, though he and several other men on the San Antonio deserted the expedition, returning to Spain with the ship the San Antonio in May 1521. In September 1522, the surviving members of Ferdinand Magellan's crew returned to Spain. Having circumnavigated the globe, competition and trade was becoming urgent, especially with Portugal. King Francis I of France was impelled by French merchants and financiers from Leon and Rouen who were seeking new trade routes and so he asked Verrazano in 1523 to make plans to explore on France's behalf an area between Florida and Terra Nova, the Newfoundland, with the goal of finding a sea route to the Pacific Ocean. Here is a map of Verrazano's voyage on behalf of France. Verrazano's voyage of 1524, Cape Fear, the Carolinas, New York Bay, Narragansett Bay, Verrazano's voyage of 1524. Giovanni Verrazano on the Hudson River. 1524, representing the King of France. But while he was back in Spain, Esteban Gomez or Gomes was able to convince Emperor Charles V to finance a new expedition to find a northern passage to the Spice Islands, the fabled Northwest Passage to the Pacific Ocean. Esteban Gomez, a black Portuguese, is interacting with the Spanish king, Charles V, the Habsburg, who were known to have color or 
or dark blood or black ancestry. The Spice Islands in the Pacific. Charles V hired Esteban Gomez to find these lands so they could trade in spices. The expedition sailed on September 24th, 1524 from A. Corona, Spain, with 29 men forming the crew. He, Esteban Gomez, the black Portuguese pilot, arrived in Cuba and later sailed north. The route of Esteban Gomez In 1524, he explored present-day Nova Scotia. While historical accounts vary, Gomez may have entered New York Harbor and seen the Hudson River. Esteban Gomez explored the Hudson River for Spain in 1524. In either direction, he passed through Maine, where he thought the estuary of the Penobscot River to be the passage to the Pacific. Gomes or Gomez returned to Spain on August 21st. During his voyage, Gomes or Gomez abducted over 50 Native Americans and took them back to Spain as evidence of a potentially lucrative slave trade. Charles V was reportedly horrified and set them, the Native Americans, free. Emperor Charles V's reaction is completely irrational if you consider that the early Portuguese and Spanish explorers believed the Indians of the Americas were the lost tribes of Israel. At the time, the Catholic monarch didn't want to harm the people who historically were known to be God's chosen people. The indigenous Indians of the Americas, the lost tribes of Israel, Many have supposed, and the Spaniards generally, who resides in the Indies, believe that the Indies proceed from the ten tribes who were lost in the time of Shalamaneser, king of Assyria, Gregorio Garcia origin of the Indians. Because of their nature, we could almost affirm that they are Jews and a Hebrew people. I believe that I would not be committing a great error if I were to state this fact, considering their way of life, 
their ceremonies, their rites and superstitions, their omens and false dealings, so related to and characteristics of those of the Jews. Fray Diego Duran. Captive indigenous Indians of the Americas were brought to Spain. Trachtenbach des Christoph Weidits, 1530 to 1540, documented some of the Indians of the Americas that were brought to Spain. An enslaved indigenous woman of the Americas brought to Spain, 1530 to 1540. Indigenous Indians of the Americas are adorned with rich jewels in their noses. Although they were brought to Spain as captives, they were considered to be a noble people. The indigenous Indians of the Americas were very healthy, athletic, and fit people. Let's explore Esteban Gomez's identity one more time. Hope Cook, Seeing New York. History Walks for Armchair and Footloose Travelers. One year later, Esteban Gomez, a black Portuguese of Moorish descent, Selling for the Spanish king, probed local shores. Ice drifts stop this explorer from disembarking, but Gomez rechristened the waterway to the west of the island before leaving. This time it flowed as the San Antonio, in honor of the saint's day on which he arrived. A black Portuguese. Esteban Gomez, a black Portuguese, let's investigate what exactly is a black Portuguese, the ancestors of African Americans. King John II of Portugal in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas or St. Tomé which had been discovered in 1471, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. From these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called. Black Portuguese is another term for Jews banished from Portugal. Esteban Gomez, a black Portuguese. Esteban Gomez, a black Portuguese. Jews banished from Portugal and Spain. He was also called Moorish, African, Negro. Black Portuguese were also known as Creoles, Creoles, Atlantic Creoles, free people of color, and black Indian in the Americas. And today, people like Esteban Gomez 